Greetings and welcome to this lecture on the aquaculture of algae. In this lecture, I'll be discussing the industrial production of biofuels and bioactive compounds. This is a three-part lecture series and in this first lecture, we will be focusing on the production of the compound astaxanthin. I'm the, your presenter, Associate Professor Dr. Kenneth Francis Rodriguez at the Biotechnology Research Institute. To begin with, let us look at the industrial production of biofuels and biological compounds in microalgae in terms of the economic aspects. The discovery of novel species such as Botryococcus prawni and Hematococcus pluvalis has driven the large-scale production of biofuels and bioactive compounds respectively. Now these algae are producing these bioactive compounds under natural circumstances. What industrial biotechnology aims to do is to utilize these natural processes and to capitalize on these processes in terms of the efficient production of biofuels and bioactive compounds. However, taking this into account, one must note that the production of biofuels is not economically viable at this stage as the conventional sources of fuel are still far lower in cost as compared to the production in algae. And at the current level, biotechnologists are focusing on the productivity of existing species as opposed to genetic modification of algae for specific compounds. This is because genetic engineering in algae is a very difficult process. The objectives of today's lecture are to introduce you to microalgae as a source of industrially relevant compounds. And in this lecture, we will focus on astaxanthin. We will also look at the production strategies for microalgae and the genetic aspects of microalgae in terms of the genetic engineering, which will be covered in the subsequent lecture module. The learning outcomes for today's lecture are as follows. You should be able to describe the different kinds of microalgae and their biotechnological applications. You should describe the process of industrial culture of microalgae and develop a strategy for the genetic engineering of microalgae. Why do we use microalgae in terms of their industrial potential? The, firstly, they can produce bioactive compounds under normal circumstances. They do, they do not have to be engineered for the production of bioactive compounds. Secondly, they can be cultured at a very large scale, both in vitro as well as in vivo systems, which are the large pond systems. They are economical to produce as they require only sunlight as the source of energy, as well as the basic NPK in terms of the fertilizer requirements. They produce bioactive compounds. They can be induced to produce bioactive compounds. They can also be induced to produce biofuels and they can be genetically engineered, albeit this is a difficult process. Let us look at the production in terms of the economic aspects. Now, when we look at the production in terrestrial plants, oil palm produces about 5,000 liters per hectare of the plantation acreage. Microalgae on the other hand can be produced 100,000 liters per hectare of pond. And microalgae are less susceptible to diseases and pathogens. They also can be cultured in open ponds and raceways. The lead time is very short, which means you can inoculate the culture and then you can obtain the production within a few weeks or a few months, as the case may be. And in addition to biofuels, they can also produce uh, compounds such as starch and lipids, which have other applications. So the algae in themselves, the cell itself can be used for the production of multiple compounds. Now, some of the algae which have been 
utilized for the lipid production are Botryococcus brownii and Nanochloropsis. In this particular module, we will be looking at the bioactive compounds in the production of biomass and secondary metabolites. I will introduce you to the very well-known algae, which is Hematococcus pluvales, which is used for the industrial production of astaxanthin. Let us look at some of the basic aspects of this particular algae. First of all, it's a green algae, although it appears to be red because of the production of carotenoids. This is essentially a green algae. It's used for the industrial production of astaxanthin. Uh, the composition of the algae is uh, carbohydrate and protein and fat in these particular amounts, which is carbohydrate 38%, protein is 24%, and fat is 14%. Now, these can also be used for the production or in the industrial production of carbohydrates and proteins for animal consumption or human consumption as the case may be. And the culture conditions can be modified to introduce or to induce the production of astaxanthin in Hematococcus pluvialis. Okay, now astaxanthin is one of the compounds which is a super antioxidant. And it is difficult to produce using synthetic approaches. This is why Hematococcus pluvialis has become the primary source of astaxanthin. And astaxanthin has applications in nutraceuticals, in cosmetics, in food and the aquaculture industries. It forms a component of the aquaculture feed and is responsible for the red coloration of uh, fish or shrimp. It also has the ability to reduce free radicals and oxidative stress and maintain the human bodies in a healthy state. And this is why astaxanthin has become a compound which has high demand in terms of the biotechnological value. So astaxanthin is one of the most potent antioxidants. It suppresses the damage of DNA by free radicals and promotes immunity and is an anti-inflammatory agent. Now with all of these characteristics, astaxanthin presents a very good choice for the production in industrial biotechnological systems. So astaxanthin is designated as 3, 3 prime dihydroxy beta carotene, 4, 4 prime dione. Now, astaxanthin is synthesized through the carotenoid biosynthesis pathway from G3P, which is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and pyruvate. Now, both of these compounds are the production of photosynthesis and o glycolysis, depending on the cultivation conditions. And the two key metabolic intermediates that enter the non-mevalonate pathway to generate isopentanyl pyrophosphate which is the key intermediate for the synthesis of all carotenoids, including astaxanthin. Looking upon the life cycle of Hematococcus pluvialis, we see the phase 1, which is the vegetative cell growth, then the phase 2, which is the encapsulation, phase 3 is maturation, and phase 4 is germination. And finally, we have the phase 5, which is the secondary metabolite production cycle. The reason why we study these life cycles as biotechnologies is because we can manipulate the conditions of the culture so as to achieve the highest production of the secondary metabolite, which in this case is astaxanthin. Now, looking upon the developmental cycle itself, we have four types of distinguishable cellular Morphology. So we have macrozoids, which are known as zoospores, microzoids, palmella, and hematosis, which are known as the aplanospores. So macrozoids, zoospores, microzoids, and palmella stages are denoted as the green or the vegetative phase. Hematosis, aplanospores, are referred to as the red non motile astaxanthin accumulated. Insisted phase of the life cycle of H. pluvialis. 
This is why the color appears to be red under certain conditions and green under certain conditions. So an understanding of this life cycle of any algae is very important in terms of exploiting it for its biotechnological potential. Now this shows you the developmental sequence. So you have the, uh, the spores. You can see the formation of the different pigment as the stages pro progress. Now with regard to the astaxanthin, and this is another reason why the life cycle or understanding of the life cycle is very pertinent. Because astaxanthin, which includes the esters, is only produced in the red stage. It is not produced in the green stage. Now, in terms of the biotechnology of production, it's essential to produce the astaxanthin by inducing the red state. We will go into that as we progress in this lecture. So at the red state, you can see that there is a significant increase in the production of carbohydrates and the production of the proteins is reduced. So that implies that a significant amount of energy is being shifted from the production of proteins to the production of the astaxanthin or the secondary metabolite itself. Coming down to the industrial production of hematococcus, we have two phases. So we have the primary culture for the generation of biomass and the secondary metabolites are induced by the application of certain environmental stresses such as salinity, light or nutrient depletion. When we go down to the industrial production of hematococcus pluvialis, we have the photoautotrophic mode in which we do the photosynthesis and we have continuous lighting. We have the heterotrophic mode in which the carbon source is provided. And we have the mixotrophic mode in which we utilize both modes for industrial production of hematococcus. Now, the actual culture of the hematococcus pluvialis in photoautotrophic conditions is carried out in raceway ponds or closed photobioreactors. There are advantages and disadvantages of using open raceway systems. Firstly, open raceway systems are cheap. But however, you will have the disadvantage of contamination as well as the flooding if there is a region which has a high monsoon load. The next option is to utilize the photobioreactor itself. In the photobioreactor, you have tubular columns and airlift. However, this instruments themselves or the setup itself is very expensive and then the photobioreactors have to be cleaned thoroughly prior to the commencement of each batch or else the light intensity drops. So we go to the actual phases. In any case, whether you use the photoautotrophic mode or the bioreactors mode or the open culture mode, you have the first stage, which is the green stage. And then we have the red stage. So in order to induce the red stage, we essentially reduce certain nutrients or we deplete certain nutrients and this induces the survival mechanism which is the production of these red metabolite in the hematococcus pluvialis cells. So this can be in the form of nitrogen depletion, excess acetate addition, pH or salt stress, phosphate deficiency or the addition of specific cell division inhibitors. Now each industrial provider or the industrial manufacturer will have their own approach to the production of the red stage of the algae. This is showing you a raceway culture system, which is essentially a trench lined with a plastic film. This plastic film is uh, UV tolerant, obviously, because it uh, grows in the sun and then it should be stable for a period of five to 10 years. You can see the difference in the colors on the either side. So you have this green stage and this green stage can be induced to become the red stage by the addition of certain stresses by nutrient depletion or by change in the salinity of the uh, liquid medium. Now, in this case, 
uh, obviously this is a region in which there is no monsoon because monsoons will deplete the salinity or reduce the salinity and this is one of the factors which must be taken into consideration when producing hematococcus vivalis because you should select a region which has a low monsoon load or conduct this kind of culture during the season when it is a non monsoon season or the non rainy season as the case may be in tropical countries the other option is to produce it in the tubular systems now these tubular systems are very expensive because these tubes are essentially composed of glass they are constructed of glass and the second disadvantage is that the hematococcus pluralis will line the interiors of these tubes and this will reduce the photo efficiency of the tube and this must be clean so generally the industrial processes uh rely on cleaning these tubes using some kind of an internal mechanism to clean the tubes repeatedly and ensure that the photosynthetic efficiency is maintained now under heterotrophic conditions light is not needed and organic substrates can serve as carbon and energy sources for the synthesis of secondary metabolites so in this production strategy you increase the green mass and then you cut off the light and you engage or introduce some organic substrate and utilize this as the source of the energy for the production of the secondary metabolites in mixotrophic conditions Acetate can also be utilized as an organic acid or carbohydrates as an additional carbon and energy source for the production of astaxanthin. So astaxanthin production can be enhanced under mixotrophic culture conditions and you can actually have a very high cell density and a high concentration of astaxanthin which can reach up to 2.65 grams per liter of the culture total culture. some industrial producers have utilized plant growth hormones such as jasmonic acid abscisic acid and methyl jasmonate or gibberellic acid or salicylic acid to improve the production of the astaxanthin however you should take into account that the addition of plant growth hormones in industrial systems entails an additional cost and this can be a limiting factor in their usage one of the cheapest methods may be the usage of salicylic acid which is functional at low concentration and can induce the production of the astaxanthin so this kind of research with the usage of plant growth hormones is ongoing as certain ho growth hormones may be effective at very low concentrations so this uh, is evident in the case of salicylic acid in which you have 50 mg per liter and then you have a seven fold increase in the production of astaxanthin and if the cost benefit is there you can utilize these kind of plant growth hormones now microbial contamination is one of the aspects which is evident in open culture systems or maybe even in closed culture systems as the media which is utilized is not sterile and this must be detected at an early stage or else a significant amount of the energy will be directed towards fueling the microbial growth and there'll be a limited uh, availability of nutrients for the target algal, algal species itself so there are certain uh, patents for the bio control of the uh, microbial pathogens and in the case of hematococcus uh, cultures certain fungi such as paraphysoderma species have been a major inhibitor of growth Harvesting of algae is an energy intensive step and centrifugation is one of the means by which you have to recover the algae from the culture medium so in this case a continuous centrifuge is 
generally utilized to recover the algal biomass. The next stage, which is very challenging and which is very energy efficient, which is the disruption of the algal cells to obtain the uh, secondary metabolite. So this is done by using extruders or expellers or even a ball mill, which is known as a bead mill to break open the algal cells. This is a key or a schematic of a bead mill in which the algae are treated or pulverized using small beads, microscopic beads, which beat upon the algal cells and break open the cells to release the astaxanthin or other biological molecules. Now, once you extract the astaxanthin, it is generally uh, freeze dried and because of its high cost, the cost of freeze drying is viable or it's justifiable. However, if the compound produced by any other species of algae is not having a high market price, dehydration is not an option as it utilizes a significant amount of energy. Now, in the case of astaxanthin, it is freeze dried and supplied to other commercial uh, producers of uh, feed or cosmetics for downstream applications. Extraction of astaxanthin can be done using supercritical carbon dioxide, in which case you use carbon dioxide for the distillation or the extraction of the astaxanthin using special equipment, specialized equipment. So the supercritical carbon dioxide relies on the principle of the critical point of CO2, which is here. And this is the point at which your carbon dioxide ex exists as a liquid gas and supercritical fluid. And this principle is utilized for the extraction of the astaxanthin from the collective biomass to obtain a purified astaxanthin. Now, with regard to the toxicity and approvals, because all uh, compounds before you market them must be approved by the regulatory authorities. So it has been approved as a color additive in salmon feeds, and this accounts for the red color of salmon, which is uh, like the farm grown salmon. And there is no other contraindications, which means that there are no Toxicity is reported in the case of astaxanthin. So, the astaxanthin has also been given the status of a novel food by the UK Food Standards Agency, and it is a generally regarded as safe compound, which means that the US FDA has not found any evidence of toxicity with regard to astaxanthin, or there is has been no reported toxicity at this stage. Now, the strains of Haematococcus pluvialis can be improved using chemical mutagenesis as well as genetic engineering. Generally, mutagenesis is done using ethyl methane sulfonate or other related compounds. And these are compounds which will induce or introduce mutations within the genome. And some of these mutations are stable and they select the Haematococcus pluvialis variants or the mutants for downstream application and characterization. Now, a note about chemical mutagenesis, the mutants which are derived from this chemical mutagenesis process may not essentially be genetically stable and may re revert back to the wild type. However, it is the most commonly utilized procedure. Uh, genetic engineering of algae is challenging and may also relate to or raise issues of genetic modification. So these are some of the challenges of growing the Haematococcus pluvialis in mass culture systems. One is microbial contamination. One is the slow growth of some of the strains. Then there is the economics of production, which is the cell disruption, dehydration and extraction, which all contribute to the cost in terms of energy. 
genetically modified strains are currently not available on a commercial basis or may have been developed by certain industrial producers but not marketed commercially there's a lack of manpower with regard to the uh, process controls and there's a lack of scientific research on hematococcus pleuralis so these are some of the challenges which researchers can address in the forthcoming years this is one of the overview of the production systems and i have taken this picture from the website of algecan limited and it shows you the patented system which they have developed which consists of the green sterilization the photon disruption for and then you have the environmental conditioning and the astaxanthin induction system the biomass and the astaxanthin extraction now this all involves multiple stages and multiple types of photobioreactors so these uh, utilize sophisticated technologies and equipment for the production of astaxanthin however when you utilize these kind of systems you are assured of the quality and the reproducibility of the production cycle so that brings us to the end of this first module in which i have introduced you to the microalgae which are currently being utilized for the industrial production of biomolecules and lipids in this case we have focused on the hematococcus pluralis for the production of astaxanthin and as a final note we have to ensure that we thoroughly understand the cycle the life cycle the growth characteristic and the metabolic pathways of any algae prior to selection in a industrial system genetic engineering of microalgae will require a higher level of knowledge with regard to the genome sequences so this kind of genomic data will be essential for the development of new varieties which are genetically engineered for commercial production and the industry currently faces economic challenges as the cost of production and the purification is high and manpower and training is also limited in this area with that we come to the end of this first module on the production of bioactive compounds in algae thank you very much for watching and please leave your comments in the comment section below thank you